welcome to the verse-by-verse study of the Gospel of John. We continue in chapter 12 today. Jesus has just entered, recall, Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, which began that final Passion Week. Now the author has moved to Monday, and in the Gospel of Matthew we were told Jesus went to the temple grounds and again boldly turned over those greedy money tables further upsetting the Jewish leaders who profited from them. Next, John will tell us, now there were some Greeks, meaning Gentiles, among those who went up to worship at the festival, meaning during the Passover week. These are faithful uh, Gentiles that converted to Judaism, but were not allowed to worship uh, at the temple grounds, but had to remain on the outer court where these money tables were located. There was actually a physical uh, barricade here in red that restricted the non-ethnic Jew from the main temple grounds because the Jew refused to worship with the inferior Gentile. This arrogance, this pride, this prejudice was totally counter to God's teaching in both the Old and the New Testament. As stated here in John, for God so loved the world, not just the Jewish people alone, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever, whoever, no restrictions, believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. In fact, the original promise to Abraham, the father of the Jewish people, was all people, all people on earth will be blessed through you, through the line of David and then the Messiah. And Paul said, Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and free male, for you all, all, one, equal in Christ Jesus. And Jesus himself mandated to his disciples, go into the world and preach the good news to everyone. But these prideful Jewish leaders had relegated, mandated that this, quote, second class believer had to worship outside of God's temple. Now the author tells us, they, these Gentiles, came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like permission to see Jesus. Philip, apparently wanting some help in this decision, went to tell Andrew. So Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. What the author is doing is showing the sharp contrast between these humble Gentiles seeking Jesus respectfully and the prideful Jewish leadership, the elite, rejecting Jesus, which largely this continues to this very day. Now, Jesus did Jesus meet with his men? We don't know, but it's most likely he did because he didn't even turn away small children. Now, Jesus speaks to the crowd, which likely included these Gentiles, and references his upcoming death a little bit cryptic. Jesus had repeatedly told the disciples, recall, his hour had not come. But here that all changes. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man. Who's the Son of Man? Recall this is a title Jesus uses about himself over 80 different times in the New Testament, which comes from the reference to Daniel referring to the Messiah. To be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed without purpose, no fruit. But if it dies, it produces many seeds, much fruit. So Jesus uses this metaphor of a grain of wheat, which must die in order to be, in order to, to be transformed to create new life, which results in that sustaining bread of life. Recall that Jesus described himself in one of the many I am's of John, that I am the bread of life. Jesus is teaching the disciples and us that when we choose to give up our old sin for life, our new life will be full of blessings and purpose, which is why he says anyone who loves their life, meaning the they are purely self-focused, loving only themselves with no acknowledgement of their sin, will lose it. 
anyone who hates, in other words, their, hates their life, meaning rejects the life of sin in this world, will keep it, meaning have new life for eternal life. And he continues, whoever serves me must follow me to give up their own nature, their sinful life. And where I am, my servant also will be. Then he makes a beautiful promise. My father will honor the one who serves me, that chooses this new life. Now he continues with this reference to his pending death. Now my soul is troubled. Jesus was not looking forward to a horrible, painful death on the cross and to taking on the sin of the world. And he says, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, save me from this execution. No, he says firmly, it was for this very reason, this purpose, I came to this hour. Then Jesus shouts, Father, glorify your name. Then we hear an amazing voice from heaven, a response of encouragement. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, meaning in the past, and I will glorify it again, meaning in the future. Father God is saying, my son, your love, your dedication glorifies and honors my name. Now the crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Imagine hearing audibly the voice of Father God. Now Jesus tells this stunned crowd, this is not new to me. And if you follow me, you too will experience God. You will hear his voice. Jesus said this voice was more for the benefit, of, for your benefit, not mine. Then he makes a powerful declaration. Now it is, it is the time for judgment. On whom? On this world's real ruler. Now the prince of this world will be driven out, cast out. Jesus' death on the cross and his triumphal resurrection will signal the end of Satan, his final judgment, and offer each of us the choice of freedom from the bondage of sin. He says, and I, when I am lifted up, meaning both lifted up on the cross and also lifted up back to heaven from the earth, from this earth, that will draw all people to myself. This Greek word to draw is the same as pulling in a net full of fish or a bountiful harvest. So Jesus is prophesizing into the future that from around the world, people will be drawn to him until he returns again. The author adds for some clarity here. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. But the crowds are confused. They really wanted a warrior king, not a martyr king. So the crowds spoke up. We have heard from the law that the Messiah will remain, mean live forever. It actually says the, the kingdom will live forever. So how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up, in other words, must die? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus told them, you are going to have the light just a little while longer, meaning Jesus' earthly ministry is soon to draw to a close. Walk, meaning to listen, walk and listen while you have the light before darkness, spiritual blindness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they're going. They have no guidance from God. Again, this darkness is something John uses often, meaning to walk alone without God's fellowship, without God's direction, his guidance, to walk without peace, to walk without purpose, to walk without joy. And he's reminding, especially his disciples, soon he will be physically leaving this earth. But also in chapter 16, he will remind them he will not leave them alone. He will send the light of the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the paraclete. He told them earlier, I am the light of the world, recall. Another great I am of John. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Spiritual light is God's fellowship. It's the opposite of this spiritual darkness, this loneliness. God's light provides that guidance, truth, and cleansing. 
Next, Jesus tells them, believe, meaning follow in the light while you have the light so that you may become children of light. In other words, followers of Christ are indeed children of light. For at one time we were in darkness, but now we are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. How do we become children of light? By seeking, believing, following Christ. Now back to chapter 1, you recall, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children of the light. Now this verse closes, and we'll close there. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. Jesus knew very well when the Jewish leadership were about to pounce. And so again, he evades their grasp. We shall close there and pick it up next week. Until then, may God bless you and bless your family with both his grace and his peace. Aloha.